started. My name is Dan Shirell. I am the New York City organizing representative for the Sierra Club Beyond Coal campaign. I want to thank everyone for coming out at 11 a.m. on basically the coldest day of the year. That's amazing. Um, and I also want to start by thanking Mayor de Blasio. Though he wasn't able to join us today, the mayor is helping lead the way for large cities on climate for the country and the world. The mayor's one NYC plan commits to major actions that provide the foundation for a more just and equitable New York City and is working to ensure our economy, our neighborhoods, and our public services are ready to withstand and emerge stronger from the impacts of climate change. Now, in addition to the mayor's goal to drastically cut carbon emissions 80% by 2050, New York City is the largest city in the world to commit to powering its city operations with 100% renewable energy. And New York City's execution of that goal is going to serve as a model for the entire world. Already the city is a leader on energy efficiency, zero waste, greening city buildings, and is scaling up its efforts to deploy solar power. Uh, most recently, the mayor committed to new actions to bring emissionless vehicles onto the streets of New York City, to scale up the deployment of solar on schools and government buildings. But we know if we're going to cut carbon emissions 80% by 2050, if we're going to reach 100% renewable energy, we're going to need big solutions. And that's why representatives from over 50 neighborhood, city, state, and national organizations have signed onto a letter and standing here today to urge Mayor de Blasio to ensure that offshore wind power plays a critical role in making New York City's clean energy future an enduring reality as envisioned in the One NYC plan. With the mayor's leadership in concert with federal action, and a large-scale, long-term commitment to offshore wind development from Governor Cuomo, New York City and New York State are going to start to reap the massive benefits of offshore wind power. Those include improved air quality, long-term job creation across a wide variety of sectors, lower, more predictable energy costs, and the opportunity to invest our energy dollars locally. Investments in offshore wind will spur economic development opportunities and will position New York City as a regional hub for the entire offshore wind industry. Powering the city with offshore wind will significantly reduce our contribution to climate change while shifting our reliance to a resource that can naturally generate plentiful energy when and where we need it most. And with the Supreme Court's disappointing decision to issue a temporary stay on President Obama's federal clean power plan just last week, we know that moving full steam ahead on clean energy, especially offshore wind, is truly more important than ever. And we applaud city officials like Mayor de Blasio for their commitment to continue moving forward with climate action regardless, and we are going to continue to back them up on that. So, here today to accept a letter from all of our organizations on behalf of Mayor de Blasio, we're lucky enough to have Milda Mesa, the director of the Mayor's Office of State Health. Milda and her team work tirelessly to reduce air pollution and improve water quality, to make sure our communities have access to beautiful open spaces, and to implement energy efficiency and renewable energy programs. Um, so on behalf of the Sierra Club and the organizations that are standing here today, thank you, Nilda, for all the work you and your team are doing to make New York a more resilient and sustainable city in the fight against climate change. We look forward to working with your office to get offshore wind off the ground for New York City. Thank you.
with the 80 by 50 goal that the mayor set to reducing greenhouse gas emissions 80% by 2050. We've got our work cut out for us. Um, and particularly since right now only 2% of the city's electric grid comes from renewable energy sources. So we want to improve that, we want to change that. Our recent RFI sought to explore how New York City can use its purchasing power to change this. The responses that we've gotten so far have been very positive. We're evaluating all the opportunities out there for additional solar and wind. We'd love to have offshore wind be part of this equation. We aim to be the thin edge of the wedge, the beginning of the transportation of the energy market for New York City so that we can flip the proportion of renewables going into our electric grid. We need to do this in order to reach 80 by 50. We look forward to having more to share with all of you in the coming months. In the meantime, we're working hard to make this happen, and we need your enthusiasm continuing to push the state and the feds and to get New York City renewable energy. So many thanks for all you're doing, and we look forward to continuing our work with you. to 100% renewable energy is blowing in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> so just join me in loving a few bars. The answer, <laughs> my friends, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Give that a quick <laughs> spin. Today, I want to thank Milda Mesa, our uh, Director of the Office of Sustainability, for taking on such big goals. I also want to thank those that we have here today, uh, Dan Cheryl of the Sierra Club, uh, and I also want to thank them for helping me even get here. Because you're involved in local elections and you're able to elect progressives, we have a progressive caucus, which I'm proud to vice chair, uh, with the chair, Donovan Richards, as well as Antonio Reynoso. And also we get to elect other progressives, like Costa Costantinides, the chair of the Environmental Committee. I'm actually here on all of their behalfs today. So thank you for your activity. I also want to thank Stefan Edel the, from Center for Working Families and Catherine Bose of the National Wildlife Foundation and not to mention the New York Public Interest uh, Rights Group. Uh, thank you for being there for me from when I started college till today. We're here to thank Mayor de Blasio for his bold leadership and commitment to 100% of the city government operations coming from renewable energy. New York City's economy will benefit from our carbon footprint and will just increase. As we move off fossil fuels, we must make smart decisions about how to power New York City in a way that best creates jobs and reduces local pollution. We urge the mayor to make offshore wind a power significantly part of achieving the 100% commitment to renewable energy. Once offshore wind power is part of the city's approach, it will go a long way in meeting the administration's lofty 80 by 2050 goal. An investment in local offshore wind and emissions less energy source will create good paying jobs and curb climate change that threaten coastal communities. And I think as we talk about looking at where we get our energy from, rather than looking to other countries or other places, we need to be focused on building it here with local yes. jobs, yeah. living wage jobs, jobs that pay a living wage and give the benefits. And the great thing about when we build it here is that we then need to keep it maintained and up to code. And those are a lot of good jobs for the people of the city of New York. And we should be investing in sustainability. means that we do things here locally and we are sustainable and we're not relying 
on other folks and it allows us to divest from, again, fossil fuels and other energy sources that are not quite as reliable or safe. Yeah! New York City communities, including residents I represent on the Upper East Side, will breathe a little easier and live a little healthier once offshore wind becomes a reality. New York has the opportunity to become a regional leader for an entire industry that is full of potential. And I just have to say one other thing. Uh, I, I love, I love these. I, 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 they look so beautiful to me and I couldn't imagine a better horizon than being able to see these on the horizon generating clean energy for all of us and we can actually watch it uh, work. So just thank you all for coming out on this Woo! blustery day. All right. Director at the Center for Working Families. The Center for Working Families has been at the forefront in the fight for just climate and labor policy across New York. This helps spur momentum for a renewable energy revolution that creates good paying, family supporting, union jobs. Well, please help join me in welcoming Stefan Adele. Woo! Woo! Uh, my name is Stefan Adele. I'm with the Center for Working Families. The need for action on climate is not just a distant or abstract act reason. Uh, asthma rates, heat-related deaths, freezing, these are all things that are actually impacting our community in life and death ways right now. And I'd like to thank Mayor Bill de Blasio and the leadership of Neil de Mesa and the administration in helping to address that, not just as an environmental issue, but as an equity issue and a jobs issue. Now, in order to create the energy we need to fulfill the mandate for 80 by 50 for New York City and to power our buildings with 100% clean energy, we need a lot of sources, and one of those is going to be offshore wind. This is an opportunity for New York City to continue leading in the way it has been and create good jobs for people all over the state. Right? This is something I know is true because I can look at the jobs that have been created in Europe. 58,000 people work in the offshore wind industry in Europe. The Department of Energy, that bastion of environmental liberalism, says that we can create more than 40,000 jobs on the East Coast with just a moderate progress on offshore wind. In New York, the Workforce Development Institute evaluated that over 8,000 parts are used in every wind turbine. Many of those parts were already manufactured in New York State, all Woo! over the state. Yeah! Woo! Products, services, and infrastructure exist right now, servicing upstate onshore wind, and companies all over the state are taking part in that. And that would mean real jobs, not just in New York City and on the shore doing construction, good family sustaining jobs, but jobs all over the state. This is a tremendous opportunity. And it's an opportunity that is moving forward and that the city is leading on. If you uh, want that's this, why, you gotta vote for voting! That's why... <laughs> that's why we join unions and labor organizations all over the eastern seaboard in supporting offshore wind as a great jobs engine. Right? Jobs for union workers in utilities, electrical workers, steel workers, iron workers, laborers, all across the spectrum who are supporting offshore wind as a real jobs engine. Right? As John Durso, president of the Long Island Federation, said last year, if our state and region lead in green energy, we will create countless jobs of the future. These will be sustainable family sustaining jobs, and that's why we're out here supporting wind farms, not just for the environment, but so we can create an equitable and thriving economy. Thank you all. Woo! Thank you, Stefan. Um, next up, we have Catherine Bose. She is the Northeast Senior Manager for the National Wildlife Federation's Climate Energy Program. She has literally years of experience campaigning across the region to get off her, the offshore wind industry started. So first of all, thank her for all that work and invite her up to the podium. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all for being here. I am with the National Wildlife Federation and we are so, so grateful to Nilda to be here uh, to accept our letter to the mayor uh, expressing the support of all of you uh, to see offshore wind power happen here in New York City. There is simply no better place to build offshore wind than right here. Uh, we have a world-class wind resource right off our shores. Um, as other speakers have mentioned, there are uh, so many great reasons uh, to bring that power online from the jobs, to have a local, sustainable energy source. I'm here with the National Wildlife Federation, so I'm here to bring the message for for wildlife. Uh, we as an organization have an 80 year history of protecting wildlife and we are a true federation. We were founded back in the 30s bringing together friends of wildlife from all walks of life. Those who 
bird watch and hunt and fish and garden and just generally love wildlife uh, banded together to have a voice in Washington on issues that affect wildlife. And that is the approach that we bring to our work today, working with all of you and so many others to channel our, our voices together um, in support of taking on the biggest challenge facing wildlife here in New York, across the country, and around the globe, which is climate change. We know we need large-scale sources of clean energy to protect our wildlife and our communities from this urgent and very pressing threat. And offshore wind is a golden opportunity to do that. A massive, massive clean energy source that's just sitting there. For over 25 years, Europe has been bringing that power online. Um, this is advanced, uh, ready technology, ready to go. Um, and we just need the commitment of our leaders here in New York City, uh, Governor Cuomo, and at the federal level, uh, to really take the steps needed to make it happen. So I'm so grateful for all of you here today, joining us to bring a powerful message here for the mayor. Um, we can't stop here, we gotta keep it up. There's a long way to go, um, but we're so, so grateful for the support, and we know that together we can make this happen. So thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Um, so we're lucky enough to be joined today by Alexis Smallwood. She is the out oh. <laughs> she's right here. Uh, she's the outreach coordinator for Rockaway Wildfire. She came all the way out from Far Rockaway today to Woo! be here with yeah. us because her community is on the front lines of the climate crisis and also at the forefront of fighting for the solutions to that crisis. Um, Rockaway Wildfire formed in the wake of Superstorm Sandy to respond to systemic injustices that exacerbate the climate crisis and they're fighting for good jobs, fair housing, sustainable and resilient planning, Alexis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank uh, Mayor de Blasio for uh, his bold commitment to powering 100% of city operations with renewable energy. It's a big step for climate um, change, um, for the economy, and for New Yorkers. We are asking that the city move forward with developing offshore wind power um, as a critical part of meeting that commitment. Um, there's also leadership, um, also at the state and federal level. Um, we definitely need you to step your game up in financing this offshore, uh, offshore wind farm. Um, yeah. We're specifically calling on Governor Cuomo to develop 5,000 5, 5, MWs off the shores of, uh, by 2025. Enough power um, to basically uh, power millions of homes. Um, and another thing is I want to thank uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio for another, you forget, committing to uh, renewable energy. Um, the hurricane, stand, hurricane Sandy devastated the Rockaways. We are still rebuilding. We're building businesses, we're building homes. And with the offshore wind farm, that would also help us rebuild our economy. Right now in the Rockaways, we're looking for jobs and there really isn't any, uh, we mean jobs that pay money. No more fast food. No more retail. Yeah. We need real yeah. jobs. Yeah. Real jobs for real families. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
compromise the truth system. It has been challenging for my family in extreme weather events because of my dad's immobility and financial stress when he is too ill to work. Hurricane Sandy damaged our home and the roof still leaks because we are unable to afford to make all the repairs. During heat waves and snowstorms, my dad isn't able to be as active to travel around to do daily activities like um, buying groceries, getting to work, or attending my dance performances at school. I worry that if we don't take urgent action now, New York City will experience more frequent and intense weather conditions that will impact us all, especially the most vulnerable. I also know that I have the most to lose from climate change as a young person, but I also have the most to gain by participating in solutions and working to create a future I want to see. I want to see a future with clean air and water, affordable healthy foods, equitable support for responding to community needs and emergencies, healthy communities with a reduced risk of life-threatening diseases like asthma, and businesses that will, infect, that will invest in our community, and also good, green, quality jobs. I want a safe, stable, and good future. To achieve that, we must rapidly transition to 100% renewable energy in New York and across the world. For New York State to go 100% renewable, we know that we need about 40% of our energy mix to come from offshore wind. I want to see a potential for offshore wind to both fight climate change and to provide good paying jobs for my community. Hey, did you guys know that asthma is the number one reason people miss out in school in the United States? We deserve better. Transitioning to an emissionless energy source like offshore wind will reduce the amount of local air pollution and will allow us to live a healthy lifestyle. Thank you, Mayor Bill de Blasio for your bold leadership in setting the goal for powering 100% New York City government operation to renewable energy. We want to work with you to achieve this goal and go even further to achieve 100% renewable energy in New York State. I want my city and state to take lead in becoming the first in the nation to develop utility-scale offshore wind and to inspire other states and cities to follow in our footsteps. We need you, Mayor Bill de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, to step up and take the lead in creating offshore wind power and ensure that we reach afterwards. Um, any quick questions for our speakers, for press folk? All right, great. Well, thank you, press. Seeing none. Um, so, there are a bunch of people um, we need to thank for helping bring this uh, event together today. Um, I don't have the sheet in front of me, so I'm doing this from memory, so don't kill me if I miss your organization. But, there were at least 15 organizations involved in bringing people out and spreading the word, including National Wildlife Federation, Center for Working Families, Sane Energy, 350 NYC, Alliance for Climate, Climate Education, Rockaway Wildfire, NYPIRC, People's Climate NY, um, Brooklyn for Peace. Brooklyn for Peace. Woo! There we go. All our energy. Food and Water Watch. 350 Brooklyn! Yeah! All right. Um, so it really took a large tent to bring this together. Um, and I really think today is the start of something big. You know, the groups here on these steps, plus dozens more across the state, are more and more motivated than ever to make offshore wind a reality in New York. And I think 2016 is going to be the year when we finally get steel in the water. And if we get this done first in New York, we vault, we vault our state into a position as the national leader on an industry slated to make up a huge portion of our future energy mix. I really, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that we will be making history once that first utility scale offshore wind farm is built off of New York's coastline. Getting offshore wind off the ground will be a legacy achievement, a testament to our collective commitment to good jobs, clean energy, and livable communities for future New Yorkers. Better yet, there's no mining, fracking, clear-cutting, drilling, or toxic dumping involved in offshore wind. Yeah. 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 The basic concept is as elegant as the windmills folks are holding behind me. The, the wind blows, the blades turn, megawatt by megawatt, we are moving back from the brink of climate